Okay, so uh, welcome to this uh, very uh, late uh, morning session. Uh, so uh, it's entitled, this session is titled uh, Speech Synthesis uh, Prosody Modeling 2. Uh, I'm Gérard Bailly from uh, Gipsalab, uh, Grenoble, France. I'm Esther Klabers from Reed Speaker, Netherlands, United States. Okay. So uh, every, every talk is, uh, is allocated 20 minutes, so we have uh, almost 15 minutes for uh, the presentation. And so I, I invite uh, the first uh, speaker. Let's present her. Okay. Um, the first speaker is Brooke Stevenson, and her um, paper is titled Alternate Endings Improving Prosody for Incremental Neural TTS with Predicted Future Text Input. Okay, take it away. Uh, okay, hi everyone. So yes, my name is Brooke Stevenson and today I'll be presenting alternate endings improving prosody for incremental neural text-to-speech with predicted future text input. Okay, so uh, modern text-to-speech uh, systems can produce almost uh, human quality uh, natural speech. Uh, however, um, most of the state-of-the-art models require full sentence inputs, and this can cause a uh, latency that can impede interaction for communicative real-time applications uh, like automatic interpreters or assistive technologies for the speech impaired. So, in incremental text-to-speech synthesis, our objective is to reduce this latency uh, while maintaining the naturalness of the prosody. Uh, to uh, help illustrate the issue we have here, I'm going to play you an audio clip uh, that we produced uh, using a regular uh, full, full context TTS model, but where we had it uh, produce one word at a time. So you'll notice that the speech has a jumpy start-stop quality. Don't get rid of a dozen numbers in a month. Don't get rid of a dozen numbers <laughs> in a month. Um, okay, so what we want to do is reduce the latency, but we still want uh, our speech to have a, a natural, unified, coherent uh, prosody. Okay, like in this example. We don't get rid of a dozen numbers in a month. Okay, in uh, previous work in incremental uh, text-to-speech synthesis, uh, various methods have been tried to try and balance the uh, quality and the speed, okay? Um, in our uh, last paper, we looked into Look Ahead, uh, and also um, uh, Ma et al. 2020 did something similar. Uh, so more precisely, we studied how many future words you need to know in order to approximate knowing the full sentence. Uh, it's jumping ahead. <laughs> um, okay, um, so we found that on average, uh, two or three words were sufficient uh, to, um, to approximate the full context. But can we do better than this? Uh, can we start synthesis when we know no future words? Okay. Well, since we're dealing with language here, which is characterized by several lexical and syntactic patterns, uh, we thought it may be possible to predict the future text or something similar to it uh, to fill in the missing information for the TTS model. And uh, these days, we have very powerful language modeling tools available. Uh, these models built using transformer architectures are trained using uh, billions or even trillions of tokens. And uh, once they're trained, uh, they can uh, generate very fluent, natural sounding text uh, like that written by GPT-3 uh, in the text up here. Uh, for our work, uh, we decided to use um, the smaller, faster, distilled GPT-2, and we incorporated it into our TTS pipeline. Okay, so for example, if our user uh, would like to say, what is next? We don't need to wait until we know the word next. We can start with the first word. So when we know they want to say what, uh, we pass what to GPT-2, and, pred and GPT-2 predicts the next word will be R. Then we can pass what R to the text-to-speech uh, model. Um, okay, and then we discard the R information and just vocalize uh, the word what. And we um, repeat this for each successive word in the sentence. Okay, so while we know uh, that some words will be uh, quite constrained and hence likely to be predicted correctly by the language model, 
Other words will be more open and they'll be unlikely to be predicted even by the best language model. Um, but between these two extremes, we will find uh, many, many words uh, that will be syntactically constrained. So maybe we don't know what the, um, the exact next word is, but we can probably guess what the part of speech of the next word is. Okay, and so since it's been shown in the past that knowing the syntactic context uh, can improve uh, prosody, uh, we wanted to study um, whether um, using a plausible, syntactically correct future text could improve the prosody. With this in mind, uh, we decided to limit the future context uh, we use to a single word. Uh, this way we can study the effects um, of three different categories of future predictions. So the first category being exact predictions. Uh, the second category, um, those uh, that are not exact but with high syntactic accuracy. So when the part of speech of the ground truth next word matches the part of speech of the predicted next word. And uh, the third category being completely incorrect or just random predictions. Uh, to synthesize speech, we use a combination of fast speech 2, which predicts male spectrogram uh, frames, and a parallel wave GAN, uh, which predicts uh, the waveform. Uh, so we decided to use fast speech 2 for uh, two reasons. Uh, first of all, because it is fast, um, it's a transformer, so it's able to predict all, all of the spectrogram frames in parallel. Okay, and second of all, uh, the model makes uh, explicit duration predictions, which makes it easier to uh, segment words uh, so that we can just choose the words that we're interested in uh, and send them off to the vocoder to be vocalized. Uh, to evaluate the quality of our model, uh, we compare several test conditions. Uh, we use the full sentence input as our uh, reference audio, and then we compare it uh, to a k equals zero condition. So k here is our uh, look ahead parameter, so the number of future words the model sees when it's uh, producing the speech. Um, okay, we also have the ground truth, k equals one, um, our proposed model, the GPT-2 predictions, um, and as a control, we use a random future word. So when we're synthesizing the nth word of a sentence, the model can see all past words, the current word, and k future words. Uh, for evaluation, we selected uh, 1,000 sentences from the Libri TTS corpus. Uh, we implemented a tokenization policy uh, where we split sentences on space characters. Uh, when sampling future words, uh, we would resample if the first uh, character of the prediction was not a space. Uh, this way we could eliminate uh, erroneous punctuation predictions uh, from the corpus because this has a very negative effect on the prosody. Um, and for each word, uh, we predicted uh, five GPT-2 uh, next word predictions using top 30 sampling and five random word um, next word predictions. Uh, so we took these random words uh, from a list of 1,000 of the most frequent words uh, in the English language. And uh, we were careful to control for word length, okay? Um, GPT-2 tends to predict shorter words. You can see the uh, distribution of the word lengths uh, there. And in our previous work, we found that longer words had a, um, had a larger impact on the internal representations of the text-to-speech model than shorter ones. Uh, so, we had a, uh, so we implemented a procedure so that the distributions matched in the two cases. Uh, okay, and just a few statistics on the prediction accuracy. Uh, so GPT-2 is uh, was able to guess the exact next word 6.8% of the time, uh, whereas uh, the in the random condition, we only get the exact uh, next word 0.09%. And in terms of syntactic accuracy, so does the um, part of speech of the next word match the ground truth part of speech, uh, GPT-2 is correct 43.5% uh, of the time uh, versus 18% for random. Uh, to obtain audio samples, we use the following procedure. Uh, so um, to synthesize uh, the nth word of a sentence, we pass uh, n plus k tokens to fast speech 2 and get 
uh, the um, spectrogram, and then we retain only the spectrogram frames for uh, the nth word, okay? And we pass those frames on to uh, the vocoder, okay? And once we have a waveform for each of the words, uh, we can catenate those together using a, uh, sorry, using a uh, five um, millisecond crossfade to eliminate glitches in the audio. Okay, and I'll play you some examples. He loaded and fired the second time when they were ordered to retreat. He loaded and fired the second time when they were ordered to retreat. He loaded and fired the second time when they were ordered to retreat. He loaded and fired the second time when they were ordered to retreat. He loaded and fired the second time when they were ordered to retreat. Okay, um, so uh, to evaluate um, the uh, differences in quality, uh, we use both objective and subjective measures, okay? And once again, we're comparing the full sentence reference and the test conditions. Uh, to measure changes in duration and energy, we used uh, the Fast Speech 2 internal predictions. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you look at the uh, graph up there, uh, we have an example sentence from the corpus, are there bears up there? So the phonemes are on the x-axis. And uh, the purple dots represent the fast speech to prediction uh, when the model has the full sentence, and the other colors represent uh, the test conditions. So we measure the distance uh, between those. Oh. Um, okay, so uh, here are the results for both uh, energy and duration. Uh, so uh, in the first row, you see the k equals zero um, condition, wh which is very far away from the reference audio. Uh, the second row, we have the ground truth k equals one, which is very close to the reference. And then uh, in between, we have the GPT-2 predictions and the random predictions. And you'll notice that the uh, GPT-2 predictions and the random predictions are quite close together. Uh, we did, however, uh, perform a statistical t-test, uh, which confirmed they do belong to uh, separate distributions. Um, but uh, when we further separate uh, the GPT-2 predictions into uh, the correct predictions and the incorrect predictions, we see that the already small difference uh, between uh, random and GPT-2 uh, narrows even further. So uh, we can probably say that the uh, syntactical accuracy that we have from the GPT-2 predictions uh, does not help the prosody very much, if at all. Okay, uh, so to evaluate uh, differences in uh, pitch, we looked at um, F0 differences at the sentence level. Um, so, um, yes, uh, to do this, we uh, performed dy dynamic time warping so that our reference and test conditions were the same length. And then we measured uh, the difference for each time frame in sense. Uh, this is a measurement uh, that takes into consideration um, relative perceptual differences in high versus low pitch sounds. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, and uh, yes, and then we averaged over the sentence, and uh, then we averaged these results uh, over the corpus. Um, okay, so here we see a similar trend to what we saw for the energy and duration uh, measures. Okay, so the GPT-2 and random are very close. Okay, and then finally we did a perceptive Mushra test where we had 40 native English speakers um, listen to a reference sentence and then assign a similarity score to each of the test conditions. Uh, and they did this for 20 different sentence um, groups. Uh, and uh, here are the results. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have uh, the Mushra low anchor, so the k equals zero condition. Uh, and on the right, we have the full sentence uh, hidden high anchor. Okay, so uh, this audio was identical to the reference sentence. Uh, we had to eliminate uh, four of the participants because they failed to give a high score to the, uh, the exact same audio. Um, okay, and then in the middle, we have the uh, ground truth k equals one, the random, and the GPT-2 uh, predictions in blue. Uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of overlap between the random and uh, the GPT-2 predictions, uh, but we did a Wilcoxon statistical ranking test, which showed that the um, GPT-2 sentences rank higher more often. 
Ah, okay. And so as a conclusion, um, we proposed an incremental TTS, TTS pipeline that incorporates incorporates language model next word predictions. Uh, we evaluated the model by comparing several test conditions using objective and subjective measures. Um, okay, and um, we found that uh, our proposed method offered significant improvement over the k equals zero condition, uh, but only a slight improvement over the random condition. And we attribute uh, this uh, slight improvement to when the model guesses the, the next word, uh, the, the exact next word, okay? Um, so uh, perhaps the results we saw are not that great because uh, the exact uh, prediction <laughs> is, um, uh, yes, not great for the language model we use, but as language models continue to improve, uh, we expect to see greater um, results from this method. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions in the room? Philip? Is there a, a microphone for question? Thanks for the talk. Um, if I understand correctly, you're only ever predicting um, a, a single um, following token. So the, uh, there's probably a rigorous way to do that where you, where you somehow integrate over all possible following tokens. But I imagine it's um, difficult just because of the kind of piecewise bits of software that you use. But can uh, I, 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 well, it's more of a comment. But I, I, can you can you think of a way that that might be done? I guess it depends on sort of looking at other possibilities coming out of a language model. Um, okay, so um, are, are you suggesting maybe like um, incorporating more extract uh, abstract features like? Um, in our work, we've tried um, just using uh, the hidden representation uh, instead of uh, an actual word, um, and, and we found this didn't give any better results. No, I'm being Bayesian. I'm saying sum over, um, sum over all possible following words instead of just taking one, but I appreciate it's a difficult thing to do. Okay, and then just sampling? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's, that's an open question. <laughs> But if it's not clear, then uh, okay. no worries. Sorry, I'm more of a linguist than a mathematician. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thanks. Uh, we have a few questions uh, online. Let me start. Uh, Sebastien Lemaguerre, thanks for the nice presentation. How do you explain that using a random follow-up uh, improves the results so much? Um, so uh, we do find that like the biggest difference is um, does this sentence continue or does it not? So uh, just using a random word will indicate to the model that we're going to keep going and so it does not predict the sentence final characteristics with the pitch drop and the, the lengthening. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the next question is from Jonas Ronke. Do you think this could be used to achieve better end of sentence prosody or pausing between sentences? The TTS could be trained on texts longer than single sentences, and the text prediction could be used to predict text across sentence boundaries. Um, yes, that could probably work. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Roger Moore. Uh, well done for winning the race with the PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, what would be the next step in your research? Um, so at the moment, uh, we're looking in uh, looking into how to uh, chunk the output. Uh, we want to know if uh, users of the system want to hear one word at a time, or if they would prefer to hear more uh, uh, natural phrases. Um, yes, and so deciding where do we make those breaks and um, so there's uh, there's options in where you can put the breaks and uh, okay, if we increase the number, uh, uh, does it help uh, in interaction? Okay, and then one more, Kenneth Church. Uh, back in the 1980s, we used to be able to input words, pitch, and duration, but these days end-to-end -end systems have their own ideas about prosody. Can you override those predictions? Uh, you can, yes. With fast speech too, you can put your own values in there. All right, are there any more questions here? Nobody? 
I don't see any new questions here as well. There is a raised hand, maybe. Thomas Huber, do we want to invite? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Thomas, you can <laughs> intervene if you are by your co first or perhaps for precision. It's not correct. It's not. Uh, Okay. I have a question. Okay. Oh, I, cannot <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot resist. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, guys. Even it's in, in my lab. J just for, for the audience, uh, in fact, you, you input the next word plus a comma or... Uh, so if there is a comma, uh, so yeah, our tokenization is on the spaces. So if there's punctuation, we include the punctuation. No. Okay. Just to, for the audience to be aware of this. <laughs> so... So perhaps the good, th the, the good uh, function is, is perhaps explained by also not only also with a good prediction of the next word, but also the with the, this uh, extra punctuation. Uh, in Th that definitely helps, uh, yes. Because yeah. um, it helps uh, phrasing and chunking the... Uh, Okay. Yes, definitely. Um, and yeah, we did um, some work looking at uh, where context is most important. And most of the time, um, there's not a big uh, change based on whatever the next future word is. But sometimes we see huge changes, and that ha usually has to do with punctuation at the end of the next word. So, okay. Yeah. So, sorry, we are. Okay. <laughs> no bad manipulation, so we don't know. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> we, have to, we have to stop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.